What's up guys, Druzy here back again with another video and real quick, a quick channel announcement before we get started is that Red Links has given some opportunities for us YouTubers that are streaming right now, which includes myself very briefly, but I will continue to stream at least once, hopefully twice a week going forward, has given us the opportunity to give away some really awesome cool stuff to you guys, our subscribers, or people that pay attention to our streams. So it's going to happen sometime this week, probably tomorrow or uh, Thursday. I'm going to post a stream where I'm going to be giving away 500 Cartman coins, 500 PvP tickets, and 45 in-game cash to one lucky winner. We'll get all three of those items. That, of course, will start this week and will continue in the weeks going forward. There's a number of us, of us YouTubers that are available for this opportunity. I have to have the contest done by Friday. So I'm either going to be doing it on Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday week to week and that will change I tr I'm going to try to do it on Wednesday so tomorrow is when I plan to try to stream for you guys here live I, I'm not quite sure on the time yet but I will try to post a reminder on my channel as far as to kind of pre-warn you guys of when the stream is going to happen so hopefully a bunch of you can check in and towards the end of the stream I will randomly pick a random person to receive that in-game loot but let's get on and talk about what we're going to talk about today so a lot of you guys have been asking me, hey Drew, what's a deck that works really good for you right now within the game? And this deck has been killing me for both PvE and PvP, and it's in my number one deck slot for a reason, because this is the deck that I've been using, guys. I've shown it in a couple of, the, in my last two streams, and in one of my previous videos last week, but this is the deck, guys. It is an adventure fantasy deck, and it has a nice cost of a 3.1 energy, and it's just solid all around. It provides a lot of value. It, there has some interchangeable parts. Lightning Bolt, in my opinion, could be interchangeable for PvE. And it could probably be Aerostorm. Would probably be the best to deal with a bunch of swarm units. That's really the only real issue with this deck, I think, is dealing with a bunch of swarm. Because there's a lot of levels where there's a bunch of rats or a bunch of underpants gnomes or a bunch of pigeons that will come at you at certain times during your fighting. And Lightning Bolt isn't great at that. So Lightning Bolt's probably the one that's the most interchangeable item for PvE. I would suggest Aero Storm for this deck, and or you could use another option of preference of choice, but that's really the only item that I would say probably could get rid of. You could probably get rid of Fireball as well for PvE. Spells really aren't as powerful in PvE as they are in PvP as far as like uh, push wipers kind of kind of situation, but those are the only really interchangeable ones, in my opinion. But for PvP, this deck has been killing it for me, and I'm going to showcase both PvE gameplay and PvP gameplay for you guys so I can break down this deck for you because I want you guys to be as successful as you can with this deck because it's solid all around. Yes, card level is going to play a factor as you push farther and farther in PvE as well as in PvP. So right now, I don't think this deck's quite ready for Legendary. I don't have any level 5s in here yet for my common cards. I've got a bunch of level 4s. I'm trying to work to get these levels up to get it more to turn up to you know the standard that I need for, for Legendary Arena. But I'm almost in the 49 right now in the Silver Shield with this deck. So this deck has been ex has been pretty successful for me. I've won quite a few matches. But let's quickly hop into some PvE battles first and then PvP battles later so that we can kind of break down and how to best use this deck. Alright guys, we're going to start off our PvE experience with a Hokan Clyde battle of a 15-15 uh, PvE level, and then I will showcase it against a PvE leader as well after we get through this fight. Now, uh, you know, because I kind of wanted to showcase just the strength of the deck in a PvE setting in two different scenarios. So as you see here, we're going to be fighting against level 5 enemies all the way throughout, and yes, I know that some of you are going to be thinking that my lead, that my new kid is a big advantage for me here. His The level 15 is a nice advantage for me, I will not deny that in any way, shape, or form. But the deck in itself, with the right card levels, this deck is extremely effective in a PvE setting, even though, in all honesty, this was designed more for a PvP-style match. So able to take out, and of course, the, the starting hand also plays a factor in the beginning of your PvE experience, and knowing kind of how the layout is going to be. So I know that there's going to be this enemy brute that's going to be coming towards my new kid, so I made sure I charged up with Kyle's, you know, super, essentially, to kind of get to the point where I could whittle him down and get him before he could take my first bar down on my new kid. Now, in this situation, I would have loved to have Fireball, to Fireball that left-hand side spawn with all those different units, especially with Inuit Kenny. As you see, I use it there, but it's way too late. I, if I, would, I wish I would have say, been smarter enough to save up the energy to do it here. Now I've got a bunch of level 5s to go, and I am running low on energy. So I have to use Paladin Butters here just with his quick attack speed and able, ability to do damage. I believe I lose 
there's a bar here with my new kid. No, I'm able to save it between Kenny and the shield from Paladin Butters. So now we're about to get to the point where we have the leader spawn, which of course is going to be Hook Hand Clyde. And now I'm in a de debacle. So what I've decided to do is not spawn any units right away when Hook Hand Clyde spawns because he's still going to use that war cry. So I want him to use that war cry on Kenny first before I spawn in Stan the Great. And I want Stan the Great in there because I would like to be able to put a you know an assassin behind him like I'm able to do here and whittle down all of these range units that I knew were going to spawn behind Hook Hand Clyde. Now I'm able to use my my explosion along with a couple of fighters to just whittle down Hook Hand Clyde and finish him off before he's able to kill my new kid. Now I feel like my level advantage was nice to have that extra health as well as be able to do that extra damage but let's go ahead and look in a leader situation and see if it's any better. Alright so we're going to fight Stain of Many Moons now this is the 11 of 15 stage the 10 of 15 stage so of course it could be more difficult. I believe I fight against level 3 enemies throughout this, uh, but I feel like this is a difficult boss fight because you have to fight through a wave of enemies before you get to Stain of Many Moons, and I feel like this is the best way to showcase this deck right off the bat. So I'm able to get Sheriff Cartman right off the bat, which I do want to use him. Then I want to be able to deal with Shaman Token as well to get that fighter out of the way. And these towers are kind of dwindling down on my Sheriff Cartman, but they're not really doing a ton of damage. So I'm going to wait till a bunch of enemies are on the battlefield before I use Stan's ability. And I'm just going to use Princess Kenny to kind of whittle down on the range unit, the range unit ascent tower, essentially, to kill it as quickly as possible. So now I've got a pretty decent little push here. I've got a couple of assassins and Sheriff Cartman. Now I feel I need some air support with Terrence Mephisto, who is phenomenal in this game, especially against rats. With, with, there's a lot of times in some of these adventure levels where there's a lot of rats that are going to spawn in, and that's why Sheriff Cartman and Terrence Mephesto are both great at that, be able to wipe it out very quickly. So I got through all the enemies, now we're on to Stan. Again, I, my, my cards are probably way over leveled for this amount of difficulty, and I really wish I would have gotten Stan higher level before I showcased this build. But it, it is random as far as the enemies he's going to spawn. He does spawn a Barrel Dougie, and then luckily Hook Hand Clyde kills one of the enemy units. Now one of the big things for Hook Hand Clyde is it is random who he attacks during a fight, but in a PvE match, he will always fight not he will never throw his thing directly at Stan of Many Moons. If there are other enemies on the field that he has spot that he has basically called out, he will immediately attack one of them first. So that's key to know is you can kind of wait out with a Hokan Clyde and use it when he spawns in a an enemy, and then you can easily wipe it out. Also, a big thing when you're fighting a leader is that the it will do the explosion energy explosion similar to PvP, but it's not as devastating as it is in PvP. As oftentimes your your units can survive and stay alive, and as you see here, I use. Kyle's great ability to buff my rats to wipe out Stan of Many Moons. So, able to get a nice easy win against a leader in PvE. But let's check this deck out in PvP, guys, because I know you guys are more concerned with that than PvE, probably. So let's check it out with a few matches. So the first PvP match we're going to do is against Vegan Eater. He is a 46, so a little under-leveled for us. But you see he's a level 13 new kid, so still probably has some tough units. I believe he's using a sci-fi adventure deck, if my memory serves me right. I know he has sci-fi in his deck. But as you see, Sheriff Cartman is the best start if you can get it at, for this deck for sure. You always want to tank to be able to help you out. Now I spawned Clyde here hoping he would go after Randy. Unfortunately goes after the enemy new kid and he goes for a fireball that doesn't kill Hook Hand Clyde which was probably not the greatest play in the world. I try to use rats to try to deal with Randy as quickly as possible. Unfortunately he used rats as well to counter me and then goes with astronaut butters to try to take out Stan. Now, now he's got Randy in hyperdrive mode, essentially, just wailing away on my units. Able to get Terrence out there to try to deal with Bedita Sally, and now just trying to poke down and get Randy down so I can have Sheriff Cartman with as much health as possible for this push. I'm hoping Clyde doesn't hit Mephesto, which he does, but I use two different assassins, one up top and one down below, so that that way Vegan has to make a decision as far as what he wants to do. Unfortunately, he decides to deal with Kenny, and Butters immediately gets that first bar for me. Now I've pretty much just conceded that Cartman's going to die here, so I'm just waiting to perform a secondary push here with my deck. So I've got Heidi, putting Heidi out for some tankage. I'm going to use rats to counter Cyborg Kenny, which is the best Cyborg Kenny counter, because then one rat dies and then the other three turn on him, so it's really not much of a disadvantage to you. So now I've got Heidi, I'm just trying to debate what I want to do. I think I want to use Paladin Butters again, but I waited a second for Hook Hand Clyde to use his ability so that Hook Hand Clyde didn't wipe out my Butters immediately. Then I used Clyde hoping that I would take out Storyteller Jimmy. Unfortunately, 
doesn't do so, so I just use it to try to get with Clyde. Now I've got Benita Sally, hoping it would take out Butters. Butters able to take out Sally, but Clyde takes him out. Now I've got to stop Storyteller Jimmy real quick, so that's where my stand comes in handy. I'm just going to succeed, you know, just let these rats do their thing with my new kitten stand, and I'm waiting to use the debuff when he calls down some units. So here comes the unit program stand, so now I'm going to use my stand ability. I decide to lightning the stand to try to get him off the battlefield because I don't want his charge ability to affect a possible push here. So I do go with Princess Kenny, who's going to die to dog poop pretty quickly. But now Dog Poo can't really do much damage. I want Heidi, and now I just want to play as defensive as I can. So I'm going to get my tanky units with Heidi and Cartman out there to try to distract as much as I can. And hoping that Hokan Clyde doesn't take out any of my units. It takes out Sally, who I tried to sneak behind to take out Storyteller Jimmy, which was unfortunate. But now I've got Butters. And if you guys have never played with Paladin Butters, Paladin Butters just beelines for the leader so much. And it can be kind of annoying and a disadvantage to me. I would have loved to have Rats with Kyle in this situation and would, would have loved to have him for uh, Kenny. Unfortunately, didn't have either, but I'm going to have to use my Kenny to counteract this Butters, at least enough to where he doesn't do damage so my new kid can deal with him, and able to take all that out and easily get the win in the first match. So as you can see guys, this deck works pretty well for both PvE and PvP, but we're going to show you one more PvP match real quick so you can get an even better understanding of this deck. Alright, so match number two against Bet's Dude. Fuck them to death is the group. He's also a 48, so right around the same level as me. And as you see, a higher level in with the new kid at 16 over my 15. But let's see if we can still get a nice win with this deck. So unfortunately, I don't have Cartman to start, so I go with Calamity Heidi because of her tankiness, because I want basically a tank out in front if I can do it. He goes with Hokan Clyde. Unfortunately, I set my Hokan Clyde down, but I'm able to take their Clyde out. My Heidi, unfortunately, is going to be low, but as you see, a bunch of level 5s in this guy's deck, and he's using a, f a Adventure Mystical deck, which can be a really rough deck. Now I've got to deal with Friar Jimmy, and then now I've got to deal with Zen Cartman as well. He's going to go with Aerostorm, which was an interesting combination, but as you see, my Princess Kenny didn't take any damage from that Aerostorm, which was weird. I don't know why that happened. Must have been some kind of glitch, but, I mean, it benefited me, so I'm not going to complain myself personally. Use my Sheriff Cartman to continue to weigh down on Zen Cartman and try to deal with Calamity Hottie. Now Dog Poo's trying to do some work, so I, I put Kyle back in the back again to do some little chip damage at range, and now I'm going to use my Heidi to counter his Heidi. Because I want at least one tank card, hopefully, to make this push work. Now, he's just basically letting me build up a minor little push here. I probably should have waited on my Gunslinger Kyle's ability there. But I wanted to get Friar Jimmy done as quickly as possible so that I could have this little push going. So I've got Heidi, I've got Kyle, I've got Hokan Clyde. So Hi Clyde throws his ability first. And now, again, I have Heidi going, I have Kyle going. His, his hook hand Clyde's going to take out my Kyle, but my hook hand Clyde is just going to start wailing away on the enemy new kid as quickly as he can. Unfortunately, not able to take the bar, but that's okay. I'm going to start a secondary push here. I get Stan back in the back. Now he's got Inuit Kenny, and I want to deal with Inuit Kenny with rats. I want my rats so that if one rat dies, it's not a devastating blow to me, but I'm able to take out both hook hand Clyde and the... Anyway, Kenny with that push. Now, Dog Poo yet again. I have Stan that's tanking for Bendita Sally, while Sally is picking away at both of these tanky uh, units right now. He's going to go with yet another Aerostorm, but my Terrence Mephesto is still alive, so I want to defend my Terrence Mephesto and keep him alive with Sheriff Cartman tanking for him. Now I'm going to put Kyle out here, which was decent timing, and then I'm able to use also my ability with Cartman to wipe out that pigeon gain and take the first bar. My Princess Kenny play was terrible, should not have used her in that situation, should have waited, but unfortunately I got, I, I panicked a little bit and I placed her when I probably shouldn't have, and now I just decide I want to be defensive, so I'm going to wait and use Hook and Clyde, hopefully in a defensive position, and it does take out, does do some significant damage to Fire Jimmy. I play my Rats again to be more defensive. Hit him with a good game for our second PvP win. So I hope this deck really helps you guys out in both your PvE and PvP experience as again, this is my number one deck right now as I'm going to showcase it and show it here again. So this is the deck again guys. If you guys have any questions about this deck or you want to see more gameplay of it, I will probably put it in my stream later in the week again for the contest in the live stream deals, which I will try to run for the next few weeks. 
So uh, if you guys have some other deck ideas as far as decks that you are using that have been pushing you in both PvE and PvP, also let me know of that as well in the comment section down below, or hit me up on my social media outlets that I have posted here on the overlay. But until next time, guys, my name is Trucy.